I'd like to give you a demonstration of some of the things that you can do with the, uh, the pickaxe based model train controller. Uh, this can be used with any uh, scale uh, model railroad engine as long as it operates on DC. So that would be G scale, HO, N, and so on. This happens to be an N scale trolley that I'm using. It's a little bit easier to see the layout on the camera if I do that. Uh, in front of us we have the controller itself. I do not have a heat sink on the H bridge because for N scale it's not really necessary. Uh, for power I'm using an old laptop power supply that's putting out about 15 volts. Uh, any reasonably clean uh, say 12 to 25 volt power supply will work well. And of course the TV remote that we use to control everything. I'll zoom back a little bit and give you a, a view of the whole uh, layout. And what I'd like to do first is simply hold down the channel up button on the TV remote and you'll see that the the green LED down here begins to get brighter showing that power is being applied and I can speed it up and uh, slow it down just using the channel up and channel down buttons. Let's get it going a little faster, slow down for the curve and bring it around real fast. I can also tell it to reverse it decelerates, stops, and keeps going in the other direction. Do that again because that's kind of fun. Just a matter of pressing the other direction button. If it's going forward and you push the reverse button, which is channel, or excuse me, volume down, it'll reverse, slows down, reverse, continues on its way. Now, we can be much more sophisticated than that. That's really the simplest thing that you can do. And in order to do that, we're going to use a few of the other buttons on the, on the remote control. First thing I'd like to do, let me slow it down and let's get it going forward. I'm going to pick a low speed. Let's just say that's our low speed. That's, that's pretty slow. I'm going to press the mute button, which is up here in the upper left hand corner. And what that does, that tells the controller to remember that as our low speed. Now let's go up to a high speed. That's good enough. And what I'd like you to notice now, I'm going to press the return button. The return button on the remote tells it that I want to give it some operating parameters. And we're going to press the number three. And when I do, you'll see the little blue LED down here flash three times. One, two, three. That indicates three zeros. It means that right now it is not set. It's zero, zero, zero. We're going to enter a three digit time. We're going to press the zero button and you'll see a little flash. We're going to press the one, a little longer flash, and now we're going to press the four. And you'll see the blue LED flash four times. What that means is we want the trolley to go forward for 14 seconds, slow down, stop, reverse, and go backwards for 14 seconds. It should be coming up here pretty soon. Slows reverses, speeds up 14 seconds each way. Now you remember a while ago we set a minimum speed. Well it's not going to go to that minimum speed until we press the power button which is in the upper right hand corner. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to let it start up, I'm going to let it get around this turn and I push that button and immediately it goes to the low speed. Now the interesting thing is that it remembers that low speed. So that if you're doing a point to point, for example, you can tell it to slow down just before it gets to the end of the track. And if you have diodes in there, there it goes slowing down again. And it'll slow equally in each of the two directions. That gives you an idea of what you can do with the controller. And really, you're only limited by your imagination. There's quite a bit of program space in the pickaxe and a lot of options that can be changed.